today this is a special episode for ai as andre had joined us from last week in the join with the join account so it is a good idea to do a ai special week today so we have we have been putting it out we put out invites to many people as they will be joining in that's how is going to be the new format for the rock class spaces weekly spaces part 1 is going to be the regular share sh chill and chill and the second part is a dedicated space for a particular topic or a genre so as we are here today for ai uh, we're going to talk about ai tools techniques learnings uh, what new things to do and so on and uh, next week is going to be well, let me share the whole whole calendar with you so i've, I've put out a calendar and pinning on top next week is about kids Alexandra will be one of the co-hosts. Then we'll have Navroz next to that, and then 3D art. So stay tuned. And uh, the tweet before that was about Rockla's Club that I'd been wanting to talk about. That's an exclusive club for all the supporters, listeners, and participants of Rockla Spaces and the listeners of podcast. So you'll be having a lot of benefits in that if you if you scroll back and see the first tweet. Firstly, you won't miss out on updates on spaces, on on podcast, or exhibitions that are happening. So, like we are pulling off amazing, uh, a very iconic exhibition in uh, Beijing. So that and much more in the future. So, yep, join in, hop in, uh, and be become a member of the Rock Class Club. You can see other benefits on the website when you go to the link. And uh, what else? Yeah, let's kick it off. You'll get this amazing NFT which you'll see inside that link. So go ahead, click out the link and check it out. Another thing is, do subscribe to my podcast on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple, wherever you get. We have got amazing conversations with um, people from diverse fields, not just collectors and NFT artists, but Bitcoin company CEO, supermodel, uh, spiritual leaders. We have had the astronaut. the episode is going to be released today or tomorrow uh, we are space scientist and many many more which are going to be clipped down to smaller episode and uh, done many more things so yeah hit the subscribe and if you are coming from here do let me know on the comments in the tweets so i will know that and give you a shout out there so cheers to you all so nice to see you okay let's begin uh, how are you doing andrea Hi Tammy. Hi everybody. Happy Saturday. It's actually my first day back on Twitter in a couple days. Uh so it's taken me some time to uh kind of adjust myself to the pace of Twitter and all, but uh, I'm happy to be here and thank you again for inviting me. I'm really excited to talk about AI and I see a couple people in the audience that I recognize. Charlie, nice to see you here. And I saw that you uh were selected to be um in the Beijing exhibit, so congratulations for that. I'm uh, not surprised you're very talented, so big congrats to you. Yes, we will be hearing from Charlie when he comes up. Amazing aerial photographer, whose uh, whose vision of the landscapes also is coming into the AI, and it comes out to be very good. So we'll hear about that. Yeah, Charlie, what are you? I'm pretty good. How is everybody doing, man? It's Saturday. Let's get it, man. The vibes gotta be right. Uh, I think you know into you're into pop music, Tamai. Okay, I see you. A pop, little pop music here and there. I see you. Uh um, let's go. <laughs> so with Andrea, what's going on Andrea? What's going on? So look, it was a mistake, okay? Uh I was too excited, but I'm not selected yet. It's kind of like on the low low still. So I'm still crossing fingers here, right? So but yeah, it's all good. I mean, it's it's fun. Let's let's get it. I'm actually excited that you're actually participating of it, like you're part of it as well. with Tanmai that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah with join. Um yeah, I didn't submit myself. Um I wanted to uh I was in, we were invited from the join team to be a part of the space and uh really really excited that Tammy decided to to work with us on this. Um we wanted to you know ultimately we want to support artists as much as possible and obviously Tammy and Neil Digital Gallery also have aligned values so we're very very happy and proud to uh, to have this partnership and to be a part of all of this. 
Yeah, yeah, we have got a great response, and uh, it is we have got over 365 uh, people interested and 201 submissions. So it's a big uh, deal. <laughs> it's tough to curate, and that mail which was sent out uh, for the next round. I know it's unusual to get a moving to the next round mail. It's usually just the congress and final mail. So I can understand. But uh, what happened was we need to get as this is a real life exhibition. And that too on a huge, humongous 12 meter screen. The screen is actually 12 meters. So we wanted to do, uh, as there was uh, some limitations, which was lift off later on by joint. So we wanted to bring in more high quality, high resolution works. So the photographers are not that affected, but it's usually for the animations or uh, videos that uh, had come had to compress before. So we thought of bringing them again in. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> It's you'll get the final mail in in a day or two, so stay tuned uh, for that and keep be on your toes. <laughs> Cheers, and that will maybe Tom, be from me. Yeah. So, Tom, what uh, what are the, the what is the final count? Is it a hundred or what? What is the final count? Maybe you will know. You will know minimum hundred. So, what do you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, the good thing about it is uh, some new de developments are happening in the exhibition. Um, as we know, China is a one party country. So there things are a bit different. And all the powerful people of China are coming to Beijing for the next week when the exhibition is going to be on. So there's a high probability for our works to come in front of the most powerful people in China as they are going to be assembling in the next week. So, so glad you all, are, you all participated and tend to miss out on these opportunities. And amongst the 100 or whatever we choose, the top selected works will also be featured in the magazines and the media houses in China. So, yeah, there is a, there are, the Neil Gallery is doing a great work with that. It's very, very professional and it's different, you know, it's a proper, Gallery. It's not like NFT NYC, which is an event. This is a all season, all time gallery with huge permanent uh, displays. So they have a good rapport and reputation to maintain. That's why the Doid and the whole uh, uh, Web three process of curating. They didn't want uh, anybody to uh, any impersonators to come in. So that's the thing. And this uh, this is a big opportunity because it's the most populous country in the world. Also, the Neil Gallery has not just celebrated in, uh, uh, exhibited in Beijing, but Shenzhen and other uh, big countries, uh, big cities, I'm saying, of China. So, so if you compare to NFT NYC for uh, US, for the English-speaking world, uh, Neil Gallery is doing more than that for uh, the Chinese or Mandarin-speaking world. So it's a, it's a very good opportunity. I'm glad. Um, I, we are pulling it together and glad you all participated. So cheers to you. I'm so happy for everybody. How yeah, uh, I was actually participate. I actually participated in uh, early February for the photography uh, gallery that was actually hosted also by Neil, Ga uh, Neil Digital. Um, and, and the screens, as you were saying, are pretty amazing. The whole setup. I was more than impressed. Uh, so when I saw that this opportunity, when it comes down to the theme of colors came about, and I saw that it's not just photography and it's going to be a wide range of artists uh, from every medium possible, uh, it made it even more interesting and see, I'm actually looking forward to see what is the end result and who are going to be the ones that are gonna qualify and actually be privileged enough to be in this part of the gallery. I know for a fact that this is not going to be the last one. So they're going to keep doing this. So this is pretty exciting. We have, they actually we have received fine works. Uh, and it has been the topic of colors because also that's a special reason behind it. Next week, we are celebrating Festival of Colors, which is called Holi. And that's colors is a favorite topic for all of us artists, photographers, isn't it? So colors of joy was the best suited uh, theme for this uh, exhibition and yeah I uh, I'm so happy to be doing this and uh, the, this huge the, this 12 meter screen I don't think that was showed in the previous framed exhibition you still got to see how huge it is you, you'll see the main screen uh, it 
it is quite huge. Uh, 12 meters, wow. So 12 meters is like three stories. Um, yeah, let's let's go. So today's space, uh, welcome everybody to this special AI art special space where we discuss tools and uh, techniques and what's happening in the AI stream because we have to be on our toes, right? It's always, technology is always growing, expanding and improving. So we need to know whom to follow, what trends to seek. So it's so glad to have um, Andrea with us who inspired us to do this topic this week. So let's uh, let's hear from Andrea on how she started doing this AI and what is the state of business or what is the state of art uh, in the AI these days. So please enlighten us, Andrea. Yeah, for sure. Um... I mean, I think I think it was around when I had to go back and think, when did I first start using AI? Probably the summertime. So about August of last year, um, I think there was a surge of a lot of artists who were playing around uh, with AI. Um, and I'm always someone myself that always likes to try new things, try out new tools. Um, and I was kind of feeling at that point that it was kind of time to kind of learn something new and, and, and to learn a new skill. Um, and um, so I started off with using Midjourney. This is when version three, I think it was version two or three at the time. Uh, version four, as we all know, is, uh, is a game changer in a lot of ways. Um, so I kind of started with that. Um, I started off with being in a couple AI uh, support groups as well. Um, I think that also helped encourage me as well. Um, I was skeptical. I think for a lot of artists, they were definitely, and I think still are, very skeptical um, about AI and have their have their views and perspectives on it which is totally valid um i think there still is in a lot of ways um, a lot of negativity that surrounds uh, ai um but ultimately at the end of the day there are everyone's going to have their own unique perspective on ai um i just encourage those who may have their views on it to definitely just give it a try um i'm one of those people where without i don't like making a judgment call or don't like making an um an opinion about something without actually doing the research, educating myself and actually um, trying it out. Um, then from there, I can come up with my own consensus of it. Um, so when I started with mid journey, um, you know, whether it's Dolly or stable diffusion, they're all very different. Um, mid journey is more of my style personally. Um, I've, I've, I've learned pretty quickly that it's not as easy as it looks. Um, it is a lot more tricky and more difficult than for those who have not tried it. Um, it's, it's more difficult than it looks. Um, it requires hours and hours and hours of understanding the prompt engineering that goes behind it. And Dolly, Stable Diffusion, um, and Mid Journey are all kind of wired differently. Uh, their algorithms are different. Um, so what you may put in Mid Journey versus, some, uh, versus Stable Diffusion, you're gonna get kind of completely different outcome. Um, so I've spent hours and hours and hours practicing and I still am. I think that's something that's also really cool by AI is that you'll never really fully master it and it's always evolving. It's always changing and it gets smarter and smarter. Um, so with that, I think that makes, uh, that really, really increases the, the possibilities that can really come from your creativity and your imagination. Um, you know, I'm a 2d collage artist by trade, uh, well before AI kind of came into my world. Um, so solely relying on photographs uh, to use photo manipulation and Photoshop to create my artworks. Um, and there was a lot of limitations with that. Um, when it comes to licensing, for example, I like using Adobe Stock and Shutterstock. Um, I use primarily um, a woman. I am very much about women empowerment. All my work is tailored to that. So, you know, I do solely rely on having very quality uh, photographs of women in my work and you know with that it does cost um to have the exclusive licensing to a lot of these photographs it adds up really really fast so that did limit me to some extent with selling nfts because i had to account in my price how much i was paying just for the licensing which really was not not always a fun way to go about my experience in in, in the world of nfts i wanted to have more flexibility in that area so when ai came in and i saw the possibilities of that and not having to think about the licensing aspect of it it has completely changed the creative process for me in a sense that it is way more enjoyable. Um, I have a lot more fun with my creative process now because I don't feel so restricted and so limited um, in that in that regard. Um, I use again, like I said, Mid Journey is the is the 
um, the AI tool that I use the most. Um, I find it really represents my style and I'm a, and it, it's allowed me to create some of the best pieces I've ever made. Um, actually my first piece I ever minted, that was all AI. I believe it's been exhibited four times in four different parts of the world. Um, so that really opened my eyes like, holy, like this, this is what I, <laughs> AI really came to me organically. And I'm very happy that, um, I'm able to just just really learn something new every single day when I'm going on my on my mid journey and just playing around. Um, and I think that's you know the, as a creator, I think we we need to remember that it shouldn't feel like a chore. It should feel it should be fun and playful. Getting our inner child to really just play around. Um, so I've I've been able to really just enjoy my process a lot more using AI. Um, so anyhow, before I ramble on even more, I just wanted to give a little background as to how that kind of went about. Um, and um, I mean, having contests have been very helpful as well. So with uh, Claire Silver, for those who know Claire Silver is, of course, is such a such an OG in, um, in AI art. She is a somebody I look up to very much. I really love when she does her AI art contests. Um, I think it really pushes the boundaries and allows people to really see the potential of AI. Um, her last one was really all about, you know, coming up with a rebuttal for very common statements that are said about AI. So, for example, you know, AI has no soul. AI is super easy to make. Um, all these, you know, statements that are, are made um, across mainstream. And so it's kind of challenging that and sharing, you know, a rebuttal to each of those statements and proving that AI is here. It is not going anywhere. Um, it if anything, it is the future, uh, whether we like it or not. Um, so I think, you know, as, as, as creators, as humans, you know, we have to be adaptable to change. It is inevitable. Um, so that's just all I really wanted to say about that. And I'm really excited to hear about what others think about AI, what their experience has been with it, because honestly, it's completely changed the course of my art career. And I couldn't be happier and more excited. Wow, it's so thrilling to hear your story. I've invited even Claire to join. Let's see if she's available and she can hop in. Like, she is really an OG. The competition she did, uh, of course, on join and the tweet here, she, she led us and showed us new GAN that we can use uh, for training our models. And it was so good. Like, she did it in a thread that many people are not able to explain directly, even in videos or YouTube videos. So it was so clear, concise. And step by step, that we could keep coming back. That was that was awesome. So yes, big a big shout out to Claire on that. Um, I have pinned Andrea's work on top. So uh, Andrea, you want to quickly tell us about it, and then I'm, I'm I want to add some resources to the to the, the chat here. Yeah, for sure. So what you pinned up above is actually a project I've been working on for quite some time. It's not necessarily AI related, but uh, something that's really important, I think, for a lot of us here know as creators that um, communicating and establishing your brand, especially in the Web3 space, is very, very important. Um, I've had a website well be even before NFTs, um, but I think it was more Web2 focused and I really wanted to build my brand here in the last two years um, and I finally feel like I'm at a place where I can finally share that with everybody so I worked really hard behind the scenes with a website and brand designer to create and redesign and rebrand my entire website to be more web3 focused I even have a dot xyz domain now which it feels way more legit I said I guess it's kind of cool um, but it's uh, it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, you know, even my link in my bio is also directly con is connected to my website as well. So it's super easy for anybody to uh, do and check it out. But uh, I got professional photographs done as well um, on the side on top of doing my AI. I also am a model and photography um, of time to time. So I felt that this was another way to kind of share my creative expression in different ways that I don't always share with everybody here. Um, so just wanted to, uh, yeah, thank you for pinning that up to May. It's been a really fun experience and I hope everybody likes it. And I'm always open to feedback as well. So this looks so much like a photograph itself. So what is the AI part in this and congrats on being collected by Cosmo Medici. Wow. Yeah. So surprisingly the 
the art that's in my website, there's no AI involved at all. Um, it's so funny. The main picture there, a lot of people actually assumed that the the um, my hand was actually um, iterated through AI, but it's actually not. I dipped my hand in acrylic paint for that. <laughs> it took a while to wash it off, let me tell you. Um, but all my AI work, uh, just to just give perspective, is all in my portfolio page on the website. Um, it gives you a, a, a deep dive as to all the art uh, I've done up to this point. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to clarify that, that surprisingly, these images are not post uh, photography AI. They are strictly photographs. Wow. I'm just checking out your portfolio. It's really beautiful. And uh, there's so much in it. Uh, it's going to take me a while to go through all the images, but it looks like it's a mix of um, photographs and AI and Photoshopping, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty wide range mix. Um, yeah, there's a bit of an artistic feel to some of the uh, the photographs. I wanted to add some more long exposure effects to it. Um, actually, one of the images on the website is going to be dropped on International Women's Day uh, with fair.xyz. Um, all the proceeds are going to charity. Um, some of the photographs may not be necessarily NFTs. They're very personal to me. Um, but in the future, I may, may, uh, may decide differently. Um, the one that you're seeing with the hand and the acrylic paint, I may or may make that as, a, as an open edition. I've had a lot of interest with that one. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I may or may not also do post photography AI. I think that's what we were talking about last time. Um, I meant you asked me, you know, what has been my favorite genre lately, uh, in the space, you know, as an artist and as a collector. And I have to say, like I said, is post photography AI, you know, seeing photo, uh, photographers, um, uh, inputting their photographs and doing something really, really amazing with AI. Um, I'm honestly blown away. I've seen some pretty amazing stuff and, uh, so I hope to do that as well with some of my photographs in the future. Um, but I look forward to, uh, if there's anybody here that does post photography AI, I would love to hear more from you and to see your work because it's definitely uh, my favorite right now in the space. May yeah, I? Let's go. Yeah, of course. Yes. Okay. So I was listening to you, Andrea. It was kind of scary how similar your journey has been about uh, uh, same as mine uh i started the same way the same time frame like august last year and i was That's actually awesome. I, I thought you were asking a question for andrea before we begin uh hearing yeah, yeah yeah let me let me let me ask the question i mean i'm just building up to it am i just give me a break bro <laughs> hold up man uh, so, this dude bro anyway so you were asking about photography and ai or and people that actually are into that or have been doing it I have been doing it from from this point on. I have been doing it for for a while now. So we can discuss that that later. But as far as my question is, what literally got you into it? Like you were doing all the different mediums, and you were explaining that that it was kind of like super difficult to get stuff on on Splash or Getty or Shutterstock, etc. That was that the main reason why it got you to AI to ex to actually explore more and to have basically no boundaries or was something else? That's a very good question. Thank you, Charlie. And Charlie, I have to say your post photography, I is some of my favorite in the space. I'm not just saying that like you are extremely talented and I love everything that you create. Um, so to answer that question, so definitely what you mentioned about having no boundaries is definitely one of the key components of this. Um, but also once I started playing around in mid journey, you know, ideas that I've had in my head, for years, okay, and I've been trying to recreate some of these images and um, and it's just different scenes that I've been, you know, I've seen many times. That I've just never never been able to recreate um, as a collage artist. And I said, you know, what? in the future, I will eventually get it out. Um, but maybe it just may not be time yet for that. That maybe I don't have all the tools and I may not have everything I need right now to recreate what I see in my head. Um, so when I started plugging in. Um, some of these ideas that I've had for so long into mid journey, it just blew my freaking mind. It's like, wow, these are some images that I've been wanting to find for years. Um, so that was a pretty quick, um, 
pretty quickly I'm like, yeah, I think this is where I need to be because <laughs> I'm going to create some pretty dope stuff in the next while because these have never been possible before. Um, so I hope that kind of answers your question that it really just opened me up because I've been able to, again, create some of the, to me, some of the best art I've ever made in the last six months because of that. Yeah, it just kind of make me wonder because it really helps with like writer's block, for example, like when someone is actually creating something and they cannot find uh, what they need, it just kind of like shuts them, shuts them down. But with this, even though you're not using this as your main tool, it really gives you a perspective of like, oh, I should have done this. And then even though you're not using AI as your, main, as your medium, it is a great tool to actually like unblock when it comes down to like creating your own work, uh, because some people, uh, they take the pride on, you know, I just gonna do it with my own hands rather than using a tool. Uh, and I respect that as well. Uh, but that also helps uh, when it comes down to like, oh, this is the idea that I want. Now I can recreate this my own way. Uh, so it, it just helps in many, many, many ways that many ways possible that I haven't seen before. And I'm actually glad that you were able to see that from the beginning and you were like, this is it right here. This is exactly what I was looking for. Why go anywhere else? Even though you were doing things differently, you were doing photo manipulation, which takes a lot of skill. Uh, you were doing a lot of collage work as well. So it, it, all that, all those things actually were preparing you, in my opinion, for this. Uh, so now you know exactly what to output and what to put in there uh, to, to make those results actually pop even more. So now you're making, you're having too much fun with it now, as I see. Yep, pretty much. And I will clarify that I still, I say this to everybody, right? And as you've said, you know, AI is a tool. I repeat that over and over again, because it is a tool. Now, whether you are creating images through AI, where it's purely, um, you know, it's a one off where you create your image right then and there with a very complicated, beautiful prompt, or if you want to use that image as part of your overall piece and that's I'm, I'm because I'm a collage artist I still stick by being a collage artist I still am so some of the work that you see from me is still actually a composite um, I enjoy the process of compositing so many images together to make something new that has not changed even with AI um, so it's very rare if I actually take if I finally get to a final output um, in mid journey, for example, and I, I just stick with that and don't make any alterations or manipulations. Um, it's never actually it's never really happened. I've always made changes in Photoshop. I've always added to it. I've always taken from it. Um, so because I thoroughly enjoy that process, but thankfully with AI, you know, it's allowed me to create some images that kind of make the process a little bit easier. Now to clarify as well, it still takes me the exact same amount of time as it did in the past with photographs that are not from AI. Um, it still takes me the same amount of time, um, and not necessarily fast track sometimes. Yes, maybe an hour or two quicker, um, but it still is the same. And I think that's something I wanted to stress and, and share with, with all of you is that the process is still pretty, so pretty close to the same, but more enjoyable. Um, I think that's what I wanted to emphasize the most. But I think I loved everything that you said, Charlie. And I'm, it's pretty cool that we kind of had a very similar path of how it kind of all came into our lap. And it's a really beautiful thing. It's been a very beautiful experience for me. And I think it sounds like it's also been for you as well. I mean, you're very talented. And thank you, Tammy, for sharing that above. Uh, that actually, um, something I do is, you know, not not all my work turns into NFTs. Um, um, I, there's a few times where I'll have pieces. I'm like, you know what? I love it. But I feel like it belongs to someone in the space that is deserving of my energy. And I actually gifted this one to Paul Paul Warren, he's a very, very, very talented collage artist. Um, and I really felt that he deserved it. It was his birthday last week. So I gifted him this piece here. It's my Pisces season piece. Um, 
And uh, this was is also a composite. It is not a one-off AI image. There is probably uh, at least 50 different images combined in this one piece. Um, that's what I me- That's what I try to do with my work. It's meant to be a photo montage. It's meant to look seamless. Um, that's what. That's a process that I really enjoy. So this is how I use AI personally as a tool. Um, AI has so many different use cases uh, that I think we are not even aware of at this point, right? Like AI as a tool can be used in so many different ways and many use cases in art. uh, And there really is no right or wrong way. Um, And I think we need to encourage that. We also need to encourage and uplift others to also try and use AI and out of the box thinking ways. Um, But this is personally how I use it. And I find it to be really enjoyable. Okay, so talking about tools, before I forget, I wanted to share this, it will appear in a while. So I'm sharing you, sharing with all of you two documents that are amazing and very, very, it's like a wealth of resource of links to AI. So you go in each of these links, you will be guided to different AI um, related things, text to image, um, music, AI, uh, prompting, some tools to improve your prompting, style GAN, upscaling, videos, everything is there, prompt engineering, music, and so many, many other things. You'll, you'll find many other uh, mid-journey alternatives like Art AI, Discord servers, and creative coding. And they always keep uploading it. So uh, do check out both of these links. Highly, highly recommended. And of course, as we are mentioning, it's a tool. So you, you, you might want to bookmark this uh, both these links. You're welcome. So. <laughs> But um, yeah, as everybody is doing it, um, coming back to Andrea, you mentioned 50 pieces together. Wow. So can you like take us through process, you get an idea, and then you finally publish it. So what are the steps in between? Yeah, for sure. Honestly, it may surprise people. Sometimes I spend like seven or eight hours just creating images in mid journey like i love generating <laughs> images so much in mid journey then like oh crap it's been seven eight hours in i probably should start doing something with some of these images um something i really like about mid journey as well is that you have an archive um the archive you can it's there for as long as you need it to be which i think is really cool because it's like hey this this image is actually really cool but you know what it may not be what I want for this specific piece that I'm working on right now, but maybe I can use it later. And I think that is so freaking cool. Like, you know what I mean? Um, So it opens up even more possibilities. You may think I may use this for one piece and you're like, you know what? No, this actually might work for something else. So it kind of almost, you know, and as, as we, you know, in our today, you know, a lot of us have a very short attention span. So I tell myself like, yeah, I say I'm going to use it, but I, probably may or may not right so just to really cool it down sometimes and really just slow down um you know once i get at least maybe 100 to 200 images and i'm like okay i think i got enough to work with here let's see what i can kind of put together um typically there's usually an initial idea well before i start the piece um for those that don't know with my style and where my um the subjects that I work with is astrology, uh, women empowerment, and spirituality. So there's a lot of <laughs> directions you can go um, with each of these subjects. So um, like Pisces season, the one that you see of the, that you saw above with the woman underwater. Uh, Pisces is a water sign. Uh, they're also known as the two fish. Um, so naturally, that gives already a couple key words to kind of work with. So I knew I wanted to be underwater. I knew I wanted her dress to kind of look like a beta fish, for example, uh, with all the scales and everything. So and that really adds a little bit more fun to all the colors that I could pick for. It's lots of blues and lots of purples. Um, so that tail that she has on the end there, I can't count how many different <laughs> pieces of images that I've created in Mid Journey to actually make that tail look the way it is. But that was a very fun process. Um, and, you know, adding the little fish on the side, adding the light to come through at the top. Um, it all starts with, honestly, with the model that I use. Um, I always start with creating the female model in my work first because that will really help me 
understand, you know, where I want to go with composition, with all the other details and elements that are surrounding her. Cause I want it to be, I want her to be the main focus in all of my work. Um, there are times where I have two women. So for Gemini, Gemini being the twins, typically there's at least two women in there. So it makes it even more fun and maybe a little bit more complicated from a composition standpoint, but that's kind of give you an idea of the, the flow and the process of how I get to that end result. Um, so the woman underwater adding the mermaid tail, almost like a beta fish, you know, that's up to interpretation, of course. Um, but hope gives you a bit of an idea of how, you know, the process and flow of how I get to my end result. It's beautiful. It is seamless. Uh, it's not like other AI artwork. Uh, it is seamless. It has, wow. Um, it actually feels like water, you know, fins and her dress flowing out like that. Um, and the bubbles and the fish and the background, a little bit of clouds and uh, underwater mountains sort of, it's, it's really beautiful. And the rays of light coming in from the top, oh man, they just, you just nailed it on that. So cheers to you. It really needs a photographer's uh, vision or as you have already said, you have been uh, working as a collage artist. So, AI as a tool just enhances the craft that you're already doing. That is that is that is what I would say. So cheers to that. And one more thing which I really feel is AI artists are like scientists, isn't it? There's so many trial and error you got to do. <laughs> repeat, repeat, repeat. So many failures. Uh, this is not good. That is not good. What else to try? Frustrations and so much more. So yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Very much so. Charlie, you have your hand up. So, yeah, I just want to say that uh, what you explained there, it really gives a perspective on people that say that AI is an easy thing to do. Anybody can do it. Uh, yes, it, 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 it's like photography. Anybody can just grab their phone and take photos. Now, what actually goes into it when it comes down to techniques uh, uh, and way to, ways of doing it or making it unique, uh, you actually did it best when it comes down to like adding elements into the actual final result, which is not just one prompt, which many people assume it is. So I like the fact that you are doing that. Uh, many other artists are probably doing the same, uh, which is bringing something very unique to it. Uh, now it's just another different level of digital art because now you are creating what you want with the necessary tools to make it happen. So that's what I actually love about AI that many people actually overlook or they think that it's um, man, uh, machine made and it's not man made, even though you are doing it on your, with your own hands and you're creating what you want to create. Absolutely. And I think it does come down to intention as well, right? Like it really challenges, you know, what does it mean to be a creator? What is the definition to, to you as to what a creator or an artist is? Um, I think with AI, I think that's really shaken a lot of people to understand, you know, the foundation of what is art, right? Um, and I enjoyed those kinds of conversations because it really is interesting to get such unique perspective, but I do absolutely agree with you. Um, there's definitely more that meets the eye. And it's unfortunate that there are many who see, you know, with having a one off AI, for example, that it's not art. And I actually disagree with that 100%. Um, there's also potential of I think for those who know how to use mid journey, for example, you can you can add multiple images into one. So if you have, you know, three or four images that you iterate, you created in mid journey, you can bunch them all together to make something completely brand new. And how would you know that, right? Like, it's very difficult to pick out, you know, whether this was a one off or not, but I don't think that really matters at the end of the day, you know, the prompt engineering that goes behind to creating beautiful AI art, you know, like you said, it, anybody can make it can create something out of AI. Um, but I think it all comes down to the intention behind it. And the mechanics behind it, and it's not always seen to the eye. And I think it's very, it's sad to see that there are many are quick to judge that, um, you know, and to feel like we have to explain how we do it to justify that this is art is not to me the way we should be going, that we should not be going in that direction at all. I'll give an example. My piece I actually created for Claire Silver's last contest, I unfortunately had a hater. 
um, somebody who was very negative, very passive aggressive under my piece and was essentially saying that I'm not an artist, uh, but knows nothing about me, doesn't know the process behind how I created the piece. The piece that I created honestly went through 150 different iterations. I will be quite clear and honest and transparent about that. So that gives a bit of context, but I didn't feel like I had to explain that in the description of my work to Claire Silver. I shouldn't, I don't, and Claire would never expect that from anybody as well. She knows how much work it is to create what we create, even with AI. So, you know, it, it is, it's challenging to navigate those situations. I'm sure for those who are here in the audience who have used AI, if you have experienced any negativity, know that you're not alone. Um, I still think it is very much, it does it still exist, unfortunately, but here's the thing, right? This is another point in art history. And I've said this before in previous spaces. You know, at one point in time, photography was not considered art. You know, there was a lot of arguments about that. Same thing as well with digital tools like Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator. A lot of people felt that, no, this is not art. You know, it's changed. For human, it is natural for humans to, to, to be adaptable to change. It's not easy for everybody, but it's a change. It's a, it's a point in art history where things have shifted and it requires us to be adaptable. And it's not exactly an easy feat for everybody. But ultimately, AI is no different than when photography was not considered an art or when digital art was not considered art. This is another point in history where there's change and it's going to take time for people to get used to that change. But I am sure that over time, the, we're going to be over that hurdle. And I do really do hope that AI is going to be accepted just as well as photography is and how digital art is now today. And it's mind blowing to see how many things it can do. We really got to catch up because photography was just a photo of a painting which you can print it out inst instantly. But what AI can do is completely different. Music, art, even, you won't believe, it can even create 3D artworks. I, I tested it out, I put it in one of my podcasts, you can see on chat GPT and AI. That it can do, it can, of course, enhance images, make on top of images that you already submitted to it, it is endless what you can do. So, um, it, I mean, you can like it or hate it, but you cannot ignore it. So you got to you got to be aware of what's happening. I would say so. Uh, make sure you're following uh, Andre and Claire. The Claire's competition was so good. Um, the, the she wanted to make a statement for those people who don't uh, think AI is an art. So we got really got to see some great amazing entries into that. So cheers to that and initiatives like that. Wow. Um, with that said, let's hear from Charlie next. He and then Victor has come on the stage. So nice to see you, Lapis. Um, other AI artists would invite you to join up. Um, yeah, uh, we will go on for another half an hour or maximum one hour. So we, let's make the best of this time. Uh, some learnings you have made, something you want to share, a tip or an insight that is coming out. So feel free to do the same as well. Tell us about your process because even with AI, they are really different process. So uh, over to Charlie, he is an amazing aerial photographer. And when I saw, started seeing his landscapes coming out of AI, I was blown away. I was like, I am a fan, but I, I am I'm following all your tweets and uh, arts that you create. So, Charlie, my man, over to you. Man, I'm freaking I'm amazing, bro, today. I appreciate you for actually opening space on this topic because I love this topic. I When it, when it's any room related to AI, I'm in there because I want to actually chime in or listen to many others that probably have the same thoughts as me and that are actually facing opposition, which is what Andrea said. Like, it's going to be opposition of all things especially if they're new. Uh, people are not uh, keen to changes. Uh, they are always trying to, 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 to be a rebellious about changes. They don't want to change. They want to be comfortable. They don't want to learn new things. So people like Andrea and many others, they, hey, I want to explore. I want to do things differently. Uh, and those are the ones that are going to achieve things in the future. Uh, whether that the ones that are going to be ahead of the curve, uh, behind the curve, because they were afraid of what they're going to be telling, uh, uh, talking about them. So you got to be brave to do things that you enjoy the most. So 
with that being said, uh, I've been I'm an aerial photographer for the last seven, eight years. Uh, just as Andrea, uh, the last six months were like August last year, I actually took a deep dive on AI, but I didn't actually jump into the big three. I call it the big three, the stable diffusions, DALI, and mid journey. I actually went very low, very low key. I went to, I used this app called, I might have forgot, even forgot the name. I think the name is Dream. I used that app first. It's an app, a phone app. So I'm like, oh, let me just, just test it out and see how things are coming about with prompts and things like that. And I was just fascinated with the outputs that I was putting out of prompts. But I knew that, okay, this is not enough for me. I needed to do something more. Then I deep dive into another app called Wombo. Um, I think I think that's the company's name, but I think the app's name is different. But I started using that one as well. And I started using my own photography on it as well because it gives you that option. So I was like, you know what? Let me combine my landscapes and put prompts on it of things that I want to see on the actual final output and see what comes out or out of it. So then I started becoming fascinated with it because you can actually use different styles. Like you can use abstract, you can use uh, anime, di different things, right? So I was like, okay, what if I actually start doing just prompts and not using my images? And I became more and more interested until I came with the decision to actually make the jump to mid journey. Uh, at that time, it was version four. And I still believe it's still on version four. Uh, they they got to improve many, many things. And I know that within probably a year, they are going to improve a lot of things, especially the, the hands, the legs, et cetera. It's, going, it's, it's coming. Uh, with that being said, I was actually like, you know what? Let me just do a, take a deep dive with my photography and combine it with things that I want to see in my photography. Uh, because that's how I started photography. I started as a photo manipulator. I, I needed to take pictures of something that I, they were in there and I need to put them all together. Like taking a picture of a reflection on a mirror and put a person that is not in the mirror, but is actually there. No reflection at all, for example. So when AI came about and I was already well-versed in photography, I was like, man, this is the perfect scenario to combine them and see what I can come up with. And I was using things that I love, like Japanese temples, cathedrals, uh, Mayan Aztec temples, uh, many, many, many other topics that I that came in, into my head that I would like to see more into the actual photography, original photography, and the the results were quite addictive. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, Tame. Within the month of January, I generated like ten thousand, ten thousand pieces, and out of those ten thousand pieces, I took out only 2,000, and then out of the 2,000, I came up with like 365 curated that I wanted to actually edit, um, put it on Lightroom, et cetera, and bring the color contrast, et cetera, as I do with my, phot my photos. So the process was actually amazing. Uh, no complaints at all. You, I think you feel any type of burnout, even though I was generating like a freaking maniac daily. Uh, it, was, it was kind of it was kind of refreshing to feel that way. Um, and also, uh, I started doing without the actual photography. I was doing it with just prompts and ideas, inspirations of what I used to see, TV, video games, whatever. And I used to just bring it back to life on the things that I wanted to see and how I wanted to create them. And, and it's just crazy that I was able to even use ChatGPT or Writer, there's another um, software called Writer, uh, R-Y-T-E-R, -E which is the same as ChatGPT and it's free. Um, just gives you credits a month. So I was able to create storylines and every everything else that I could imagine with the actual pieces that I was creating or collections that I was creating. So in overall, I say 10 out of 10, when it comes down to experiencing AI, even though I'm a traditional artist as, a, as far as like a photographer, photography is something that I'm not going to quit ever because that's something that actually gets me out there and experience the world as I love traveling. But at the same time, I see AI as a tool to complement my traveling by actually seeing things out of this world, uh, fantasize about things that I would love to see, but I will not be able to see in this lifetime. So that's basically 
me in a nutshell summarizing what AI the AI experience have been to me. To me. I have pinned some works. That, thank you for sharing that uh, great journey. I have I have pinned your work on top, and it looks like uh, that landscape that you are referring to, real landscape, and then the output of it. And uh, this is from Latin America somewhere, Machu Picchu. I'm not sure, but can you tell us about this? And even the one on the side that is a complete, uh, what do you say, uh, completely AI made. So I'd love to know the thought behind this both. Yes, uh, the one that the latest that you post is actually in Mexico, as uh, southern Mexico, in a state called Chiapas. They have beautiful, beautiful um, Mayan ruins uh, because in Mexico they are the two types are the Aztecs, which is the northern and middle Mexico, and then in the southern Mexico, uh, Central America, there are the Mayans. So in this area, I was able to capture in real life the, that temple, the ruins. Uh, the Mayan temple. Uh, and when I actually took that image to AI, I wanted to recreate it the same way with same temple. Uh, it's different vibes, different angles and everything else. And I was quite impressed with the different results that I was getting that I, it was super hard for me to choose one. Uh, and, and that's basically it, man. Like I was just fascinated with the fact that I could actually create things that it could transport me to the past, uh, like ruins to a completely well uh, structured building that hasn't been destroyed, uh, that I can actually like recreate and say like, okay, uh, uh, 50 years uh, BC, that I can actually recreate how this actually looked before, uh, as you can see it in real life, that is not like that anymore. So that's basically it. The other one that you already put in there, uh, it's a cityscape. Um, that's actually one of my drone photos in Chicago. And I was able to put that in there and combine it and put a person in there on top of a building. I used to be a rooftopper before I actually got into drone photography because I used to love going to top levels of buildings or roofs. Uh, no, most of the time, it's not the legal way, but that's what sparked the adrenaline rush, right? Then when drone photography came about, I was like, you know what? Uh, it's less risky. I can take the same angles. I'm not gonna, it's not going to feel the same. But at the same time, I'm actually getting the photos that I wanted to get when I was actually a rooftopper. So this actually represents my past and what I actually was able to capture in real life as well. Freaking awesome. Wow. Um, really, really impressive what you do, man. And you keep it consistent. Oh, man, you keep coming. You keep them coming. You keep them posting um, and keep uh, showing your audience about this. So, guys, do check out his whole portfolio, even on Instagram. You'll see a lot of it on one page. And uh, make sure you follow Charlie. And if you have any more questions, uh, any feedback, comment for Charlie, this is your time. And then I have some jokes for you. Okay, so let's jump to the jokes. As we all, as you all know, comedy is an integral part of the rock class space, my space. And today's jokes are going to be AI related. So, why did the robot artist switch from painting landscapes to portraits? Why? Why? Tim? Because it. Found because it found human faces more pixelating. Okay, another one. I didn't get a laugh out loud on that, so another one. Okay. Um, why did the AI artist painting of a tree look so realistic? Go ahead. I'm trying to figure this one out. Because it was rooted in deep learning. This freaking guy, man. Oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, let's go. Charlie, this is impromptu, OK? Do you like Pokemons? Or did you watch ever watch Pokemon? I did. 
Um, I if you're gonna make me choose, I rather pick Pokemon than Digimon. Do you remember Digimon? Oh yeah, that card game. No, like it was it was a bit weird. I didn't quite understand, so yeah. I didn't watch. No, uh, it was a car. It was a cartoon too. It was the same. It was the same photocopy of Pokemon, but actually the Digimon were like uh, robotic <laughs> type of like animals. So it was the same thing. So yeah, I you, I used to watch it, but I was not really into it like that. So yeah, for sure. So, Charlie, what is the favorite Pokemon of Charlie? Is it a joke or this is an actual question? You kind of confused me there. Depends. I you mean, don't know. You gonna you gonna make me choose? I'm gonna pick the. Uh, 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 man, what was the name of that monster? The freaking dragon one. Uh, Charizard. Let's go. That was my answer too. See, what an intuition. Charlie, Charlie Zard is Charlie's favorite Pokemon. Let's go. <laughs> Charlie Zard, get it? Okay. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> this freaking guy, man. No time, I Come on, bro. <laughs> okay. Let's go. All right. That was a good laugh. Uh, glad we had that laugh. All right. So uh, we'll have another break uh, of this in after the next speaker. So until then, guys, do check out my pin tweet. Uh, you're all welcome to join the Rock Class Club. All those supporting the space, watching the podcast, of course, do subscribe to YouTube. And also, you'll get many more additional benefits. So it's actually an NFT for which the registrations have opened. Uh, when you see the website, you'll realize all the benefits in it. You will get a newsletter of all the upcoming exhibitions or announcement by me. You'll be the first person to, I like you have a priority list to collect my new NFT drops. All that and much more discount on merchandises. All these things are extra, but primarily it's for uh, anybody who wants to support uh, the Rockless space or the initiative which I've been doing, it's been consistently going on for over more than a year, like 55 weeks was today. So um, check it out. And it's a kick-ass, awesome 3D animated NFT with the rocket going around that token, which is also spinning in the space. So <laughs> do check it out. Uh, yeah. With that said, do subscribe to my YouTube and we will go to the next speaker, Victor. How are you doing, Victor? Hey, bro. I'm doing well. Um, to be honest, I just woke up. I need uh, one more minute, and I'm going to be able uh, to talk further on. Just need one minute real quick, and I will be back. It's, he needs to meet his joint family. Isn't it, Victor? Isn't it? No, I'm here. I'm here. It's all good. I just needed to work hands real quick. Um, but uh, yeah, how Did is you your that? day so far? Did you hear that or no? Joint family. Am I what? You got to visit your joint family. The joint, joint family. family. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, bro, I wanted to ask you a little bit. How are you? Because uh, you've been all this time uh, building your podcast, growing it there. How's it going? Do you want to update us? Not on just what you're doing in general, but like how's it growing for you? Um, because I, I don't know if you need maybe a, a, a fresh outlook, maybe a hand of help as well. But you can ask me at any time and I can suggest maybe growth strategies, the ones that I know that can benefit you. But I'm just curious, how's it growing for you? How's it all going? Is it going? Glad, glad, glad you asked the question. Uh, in my art, I'm venturing more into 3D objects now. So you can, guys, you can check out my gallery. Uh, it has, it has got uh, 3D objects which I'm, which I keep on adding. You can go around it and see it. If you're, if you're watching it on OpenSea or on other platforms, you can spin around that NFT and see. And all those who attended the anniversary, Rockless space also got one as an airdrop. So you can put it in the metaverse and more. So in the coming months, I'm focusing more on that. I even created, you won't believe, um, um, 3D work <laughs> assisted by AI. I mean, AI can't do it completely. 
No, no, I know my friend about AI and 3D. Do you know what actually AI can do? It can create an animative 3D uh, scene into the code, and you can then post it uh, for whatever program you use, and it will work. I tried it. Oh, let's send me that. I would love to see. But yes, that's yeah, what is going I, on. I can write you a little instruction, uh, but <laughs> yo, it's crazy. What AI can do now is already crazy. But the thing is, in two months, it will be insane. The AI develops so fast. It's it's like, do you know that ChatGDP started less than half a year ago, well, being released? And you know that right now there is already, I believe, the fourth or the fifth update. So it's it's updating very frequently and fast. It's progressing further, very, very fast. And that's scary. And then all other AIs too. I mean, Midjourney been developed actually very well and fast, but Midjourney has a limitations, which I don't know how they're gonna solve. They added like a bunch of settings which doesn't work with each other, so it's uh, kind of useless. Um, I'm sorry to say that if you like Midjourney, it, it's useless. Um, but uh, they progress further nicely. But I mean, the 3D art works. Um, it's like uh, not the, that it is the different platforms integrating AI into them. So all those designers out here, you can you can actually have an app integration into Canva. So you can design websites or banners or whatever you want. But then in Yo, AI you can create the website within five minutes with AI. I also did that. I, I tested it out if it works. And yes, it does. Exactly. It's it's crazy of how many things it can do. So yeah, stay tuned. That's why we are having this space to like blow people's mind. Um, it might scare away people that are people who are afraid of losing jobs, but don't worry. If you just adopt to it, uh, there has to be a human element uh, to this. So. But there is new jobs being created. You know, it's like I understand people that are worrying, you know, because that's something they've been learning. But if you have a skill that is a professional skill, the AI cannot replace you. In a sense, it's like, look, we have, uh, you know, the data analytics. Does it mean that the data analytics is telling you the answers? No, you need the human to look at this data analytics to take the decision and understand the content and analytics. So you still need a person there. Will it be possible done by only AI? I think, yeah, but will it be 100% accurate? That's questionable. Um, so a lot of things will be not replaced. And there is new jobs created, like the prompt engineer and uh, several others. That's literally a new job, guys. You can go to Fiverr right now. You can check it. Go to Fiverr.com, like I'm encouraging you. Go there, and you will see there is AI tab, and there is prompt engineer as a specialty now, where the people getting paid $15 an hour, writing a prompt. And uh, guess what? All of you in the room, I guess, still don't know how to write the prompts correctly. That's what I believe. Um, just because you haven't studied just the prompts and I've been doing that for a year um, and I still don't know shit. I know people that do it well better than me. And uh, by this estimation, I assume that nobody of you knows how to write prompts really, really nicely. And uh, that's already its own new speciality. How does it feel? Just writing a, a piece of text is already the speciality. Nice. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Awesome. So uh, Victor also has a complex process when he creates his artworks going back and forth. So Victor, do you have a fresh work from you that you want to share and talk about? Uh, to be honest, um, I have a lot of works, but uh, the thing is, um, majority of them you already saw. I haven't really been creating anything new in the sense of artwork to be releasing much. Um, I mean, if you want to see everything I ever created, uh, which majority of the things is sold out in general, I created over 31 NFT collection, my friend. How's that sound? And over 70% of them is completely sold out. So that's the truth. And uh, all of those collections on my website, and there's a little alpha on what I've been working the last uh, three months together with our team also on my website. So I suggest you check that because I will start sharing on Twitter only on Monday and I've been preparing everything for it. Um, it's still not everything done, but hopefully it will be done today or tomorrow. Um, but the thing is, I've been working on something that can uh, really change the space, um, really benefit the people around the community. And uh, yeah, we came up with the idea creating the collection of 420 NFTs with insane utility that literally never existed before. It's it's like an innovation that wasn't done yet. 
Okay, it's been hard to write this code, and uh, I'm very fortunate to have such a team around me and our project that you know helped me to execute on that. But I don't really have much to share. Um, and yeah, I mean, my work's been showcased worldwide. I'm preparing a couple showcases uh, as well. You can check my pin post if you want to know more information on that. But uh, yeah, I've been just working on that, and then in real life events in in real life showcases, in real life connections. I'm living in Lisbon. There's a huge community of a few thousands of people. And uh, every single Wednesday, we have a Web3 Wednesday. They have also another meetup at Sunday or Saturday. I don't remember exactly. But on the other side of the bridge, which I don't go to because it's far. Um, and I prefer to work. Like right now, I'm in the space with you, right? I'm chilling. Um, but yeah, if I had more time, I would be going to other side of the bridge. Uh, to meet more of the people. But uh, yeah, I mean, check my pin post on my page and on Stone Tiger page. That that would give you the reference what we've been preparing as well. Um, and there's many of those things. So I, I hope it gives a little bit idea what I'm working on. But yeah. Um, Absolutely, Victor. You do so many things. He's always available on Discord, always doing stuff for the community. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're an asset in the community still. Uh, you are driving strong, so more power and best wishes to you, Victor. Uh, wow, it's so nice to have you. So, um, any questions or any feedbacks for Victor, go ahead, or else we will go to another joke and <laughs> then to the next speaker. All right, so are you ready? Yeah, I, I guess there is no questions, um, but that's okay. Uh, and for everyone, I really encourage you to go to my website. Uh, it's in my bio. Uh, you will see someone you know .com, uh, and just go there. It will give you the clarity. That's an alpha before I shared on Twitter. I mean, it, something's already you could get now. So what I'm saying is that you shall go there and check it out. Uh, but if you don't, it, it's on you. Uh, you will discover later, maybe too late, eventually. And don't blame me for that. And Victor, someone you know is definitely someone you should know. <laughs> so follow if you still aren't. All right. So uh, time for the joke and then to the next speaker. Why did the AI artist break up with its girlfriend? Any guesses? Any guesses? Guys, are you no. are you no. laughing before even the answer? Okay, let me tell you. Why did the AI artist break up with his girlfriend? Because she couldn't handle its neural style transfer. All right, so I think it didn't land. Um, okay. Uh, it's tough to make AI yeah, this laugh. Okay, next. Um, all right, here's another AI joke for you. Why did the robot artist, no, this already said. Why did the neural network refuse to paint pictures of cats? Because it was afraid of Feline errors. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, next uh, to the next person. Uh, Dark, how are you doing? Dark 248. Doing good, Tanme. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. What about you? Please, I've, I've heard you for the first time. So go on, introduce yourself and tell us more about you do and what you style pin free feel free to pin something on top okay, okay. so hello everyone um you guys can call me Dirk. my name is actually joshua um i've gone by Dirk for the last 14 years or so um it's kind of my web three base name um i am a newer ai artist um 
I'm one of the ones that fall into, as Charlie said, the big three. I started off on new, um, mid journey. Um, with mid journey, it, it came down to learning the prompts and how to go from there. Um, just like Victor says, the prompts are beyond belief what you can do. I take normal pictures that I've taken in my life and I run it through the AI system, um, much like Charlie. I'll take it to a point where I like it and then I'll save it and run it back through again to get something completely different. Up on the top, you see that I just pinned four years of life. This was actually in a house that I was renovating and within, I think it took me 125 generations to get to this point. After this point, I took it to Photoshop and I took it and edited it to a point where I actually felt comfortable sharing it. Um, it is very hard to find a direction right now, I think, in mid-journey because everybody, even somebody new, can go to, say, Ch chat GPT and make something beautiful. The other piece that I'm going to show you right now, this is nature's depression. This was actually a picture of my daughter that I ran through chat GPT, put it the prompts of what the picture was and had it generate on mid journey at that point. And this is what came out. It's crazy to think that you can use multiple AIs as one cohesive unit. Um, even with Dolly, uh, chat GPT, open AI's AI system, it's not great yet, but it will go ahead and make amazing pieces that you can take and update piece by piece so that's kind of what's been going on with me i'm i've been in web3 now for four years um as a dj and that's mainly what i do um and, and but i i love the art piece of it i've always been an artist i've always drawn i i just need um to continue to find my direction in life Beautiful. I think we all are in same boat with finding direction. I, I personally am, but I'm at a better position uh, compared to two, three years ago. So from my experience, I would just say uh, to be patient and like to look within. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty positive, very sure and positive that you'll find a way and you'll be a very strong pursuit uh, of things you want to do. That will that itself will inspire you to do more. So yes, thank you for sharing. Glad to know that you have been doing this for. I mean, you have been a DJ for four years. Wow. Um, so how the transi transition into NFTs and then to AI? So the the transition was actually pretty easy. Um, my daughter saw a bunch of NFTs that she liked and wanted to. She she wants to be an artist when she grows up. So that's kind of where that came from. Um, the other parts of it were, you know, over here in this part of Florida that I live in, there's not a, a huge Web3 community. Uh, you can say I live in the boondocks and my nearest neighbor is a mile away. But it was something that caught my radar very early. Um, and I've tried to expound on that as I go through life. Wow, very interesting. Um, would love to hear any questions or feedback for uh, Joshua, uh, new member joining in our NFT spaces. Of course, you have been, to, yeah, this is one question for you. You have been, be, been a DGEN and in DGEN spaces, how do you feel the vibe of art and NFT spaces compared to that? DGEN <laughs> uh, spaces are way more. Um, how do you put it? Exciting in the wrong way. <laughs> um, I like going to these kind of spaces because, you know, I can do this when I'm around my kids and I don't have to worry about what's going or going on. Or you can go to a DJ space and not know what's going on two seconds from you asking that question. So the, these spaces are much more cohesive to my nine to five job as an electrician. And, uh, then there's the other times that the other spaces work out even better. 
Let me ask you this, uh, Dor Dirk. Uh, what made you do that transition into AI? Like, what actually got in, got you into it? Like, uh, was it that you were looking for something new? Like, what was the the initial reason of why you actually wanted to deep dive this? Yeah, not a problem. Um, so the AI pretty much came about mainly because I'm sitting there watching uh, other people that I look up to in the space. Um, Ashwandi, um, or Ashu as people know him, have been doing it for years and they kind of got me into it. And uh, it was able to take me from doing line drawings and not putting my work out there to finding other ways to make myself feel comfortable. Um, I'm much like you guys out of probably 40,000 images of AI. I've maybe put out like nine. <laughs> I, I'm very, my biggest critic is myself. And I think that AI has helped me hone in the things that I've missed out on with my drawings. Um, and it really comes from the community that's around. Um, there's a lot of AI artists out there that are willing to help and teach. So that's where that comes from. Had you ever considered like combining your work that you were actually were not comfortable with doing uh, on, on, on actually showcasing with AI, combining those? Or that's something that you haven't thought of, of, of it yet? Um, yeah, actually... So on my foyer of life, I am going to surprise the, uh, well, it's not a surprise since I'm saying it, but I'm going to surprise the uh, purchasers of it that get three or more um, with the airdrop that's going to be a AI and a personal piece of art. It is something that I have done in the past. It's just, I think AI now is catching up to what my vision is and what it is doing with all the different because i've used the wambas i've used the mid journeys i've used the dollies i think as long as i continue to look and be um open to it i think it's another way to get the artwork that i've just saved out and about i mean the technology is going to get better as as it goes uh in six months that i actually been experiencing it went from version one to version four mid journey um I mean, six months from now, it could be probably version eight, and now the, the possibilities are endless. Who knows? So, so yeah, I just commend you to keep working on your own traditional work, and also put it in complement with AI as well. I think I think it will actually get you to that next level that you're looking for. That you actually you were talking about that that is not at that level yet, but it will be there. So definitely just jump in and different on those mediums that you were actually working on and put it in there as well. Why not? Appreciate it, Charlie. Thank you. Let's go. All right. We have one last speaker and then we'll uh, hear your closing remarks and then have a great weekend creating amazing art. But you know what? Before that, another AI yeah, joke. Uh, <laughs> What, why did, I mean, you cannot escape me asking, right? So you got to hear it anyways. So why did the AI artist painting, AI artist painting sell for millions? Why did the AI artist's painting sell for millions? Guys, you want to, you want your works to be sold for millions, right? So why? Because <laughs> it had a lot of layers. Probably not. Um, Man, Tom, I'm not. I don't care what people say. Your jokes are the best. See, because okay. it's not even the joke; it's the fact that you have to explain the joke that makes it even better. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I am done, bro. Like man, freaking, you are, you are freaking. You're something else, bro. Keep doing you, bro. That's what I'm talking about. The art of the art of coming back from bad joke deliveries. So yeah, <laughs> all right. So NFT man, over to you. You didn't get a chance in the morning space, so we'll hear from you. Uh, hello, 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 Dana. Hello, uh, Victor. Uh, all in the space. I am okay. Uh, I'm very cool. 
<laughs> вот. А как дела? Все. Uh, I understand you. My uh, so cool. Yeah, it's good day for me. I um, hope it's a good day uh, for you too, my friends. Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, please spin up something on top. I hope it's not. Uh, what do you say? As spooky as the characters on your name. Uh, just say, yeah, just put it up. Okay, let me put it for you. Um, pam pam. Okay. Uh, I think you uh, talk uh, to me uh, with my uh, PVP cactus, right? Uh, please. Uh, this we are talking about AI works ah, today. Okay. So so oh, talk let's hear about your ai work and its journey oh okay okay uh, my name is vladimir i am ai creator uh, not artist just creator i create my art in ai and procreate in photoshop and procreate in adobe lightroom i add my arts uh, more filters more light and other other things uh, the later uh, fingers uh, uh, i AI uh, don't uh, very good create fingers and others. And yes, I procreate uh, arts and create in uh, this art NFT. And uh, first, I talk about my first collection. It's my very big collection from uh, OpenSea. It's collection about uh, lamp monsters. Uh, these monsters very cool. And I think uh, people love my monsters because I have uh, 50 sales for two ones. And it's a uh, very... Uh, big for me and it's very good for me price for this uh, nft zero 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 five yeah it's a collection about uh, cool monsters it's monster very funny and very crazy and uh, these monsters uh, are in your life uh, very very uh, very very more light yes uh, it's a uh, first collection uh, from open sea and uh, thank you very much uh, uh, Tan May, for you give me talk about my project. Uh, thank you very much, uh, people who listening me. Uh, Victor, I, I hope uh, you peace with me. It's so cool. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Oops, I was speaking with my mic off. I was saying um, NFT man's, uh, like people already started leaving as I announced he's going to be the last person, but I couldn't leave Chaz in the list request. So we will hear from Chaz very briefly. So uh, cheers to that. I really love the monsters, Chaz. So uh, Chaz, I'm saying uh, NFT man. So cheers to you. And now we are hearing from uh, another master of AI whose works are going to be in times Square and many things. So uh, I believe his main tool is Mid Journey. Uh, so let's hear about some tips or alphas from jo from Chaz. What do you, Chaz? Um, what's going on, man? Um, yeah, I actually I use Mid Journey sometimes lately. I, I just I've been using it lately a lot more. Um, I like the new version of it uh, with the V4 and coming into V5. Um, I also use Stable Diffusion. I've been using this one called uh, Dreamlike.arts, which is a website, web, web based browser one that's actually free that does some really cool stuff. They have a, uh, a photorealistic engine that like, is just amazing to me. Like, it just blows yeah. my mind. Um, yeah. A lot of my stuff but that I've been doing. Reminder you got to be brief. Uh, some nuggets yeah. you want to give to the audience who are joining in, and of course, pin one of your works so we can have a look at it. Um, well, I just want to show you guys this, actually, because this is going to be on the front page of Maker's Place on Monday morning. Um, I'm going to be part of the uh, Manifold import, content, uh, import contract into, into Maker's Place um, showcase on Maker's Place. On Monday morning, they're going to have it on the front page. The, I came in on the top 10 with a community vote, and this is all AI work that I collaged together. It's pretty cool. Oh my God, Andrea should have seen this, a collage and an AI. Do tag, just do tag Andrea. She'd love to see this. She was just speaking about 
collage and AI work and her style. So yeah, it's like nine <laughs> nine different layers and like nine different pieces of AI and like other stuff like layered together. Okay, uh, beautiful. You always uh, surprise me by new works that you do. So best wishes to you, Chaz. One question out of curiosity: Have you ever considered being an um, auction house person, like who conducts the auction? Yeah, totally. I'm down. Because the the way you speak reminds me of those uh, American TV series about auction. And, <laughs> uh, so yeah, they speak yeah. that fast, and also you have got that rhythm when you speak. So yeah, you're definitely a good fit for that. So maybe you can yeah. start the auction with NFT auction, like a space NFT auction space. And that'd be fun. We haven't done those in a long time. I remember we used to do that with the. Back in the clubhouse days with, with screensaver.com or screen, uh, whatever that was. Yeah, that was fun. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, this is a rock class special space for NFTs. I mean, NFTs, obviously NFTs, AI art, I mean. So uh, next week is going to be, I'm putting up a schedule so all of you can join on time. Uh, the first space is our regular space. The second space, which is at this time, Next week's special topic is kids. So all the parents here or who lovers of kids work, uh, join in. We are going to have kid co-hosts. So it will be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of young energy in the space driving us. Uh, it will be fun, like innocent. I'm looking forward to that kind of space also. Uh, that and the other tweet is from my pin tweet. I really, uh, you, you really want to check out my YouTube and subscribe. A lot of amazing videos waiting for you there. And this is another announcement. We are doing a Rock Class Club token. So you got to, you can be a member of the Rock Class Club. Uh, all these spaces we do, all the podcasts we do, and many more things coming up. So you can see the benefits on on my on the page that asks you to go. So first people to buy my NFTs, you get a special newsletter so that you don't miss out on NFT opportunities or updates on exhibitions or uh, see my artworks or get some discounts on uh, merchandises and so much, much, much more. And it's a lifetime membership, 0.015 Ethereum. And the more number of tokens you own, the more uh, benefits you get. So do check it out. And the sponsorship level benefits are also there. So I'm sure you want to check it out. Do subscribe and let's get it. Much love to everybody who's joining in late. No problem. I'll see you all next week. Uh, Terra Bitcoins and Yuli have joined us again. It was great talking, talking to you in the morning. Um, yes, let's go. Bye-bye. Good night. Take care. Next week's course is going to be Anastasia, who's throwing high emojis from there. So uh, do join us. It's going to be a wonderful kids special space. Bye-bye. Have a great week. And by the way, it's going to be three, in three days. It's going to be two years for me minting my first NFT. So just a fun fact. And on the 8th will be the mega exhibition in China. So yeah, I'm just telling out as I remember. Okay, bye-bye.